Just lift your hands and bless him for every promise he has made to you. Every word of God to you. Lift your hands. Bless him. Say, Lord, thank you for every word you've spoken over my life. Thank you for every promise. Thank you for every promise. Come and let the Lord hear you. Thank him for every promise. Thank him for every promise. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for every promise. Joraba kaba taki balada braya. Jete berana masala da brata ya. His word is here and amen. His word is here and amen. Brande ke sabarada basha. Ke baranda sabrende ko. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible said the word of the Lord is yea and amen. That everything the Lord has told you is coming to pass. Believe me. Your responsibility, like I did teach last week, is to believe. The Bible said, Blessed is she that believeth, for they shall be a performance of everything that was said to her. I know God has spoken to us on a corporate level and then individual level. I need you to believe the word of God. Everything he told you is coming to pass. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible said, write it down. You might tarry. Wait for it. It will surely come to pass. Amen. Tonight, I know you are here ready to receive. I want you to pray in one minute before you sit. Lord, my heart is open. To learn, my heart is open to receive. Lighten me up. Lighten me up. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lighten me up, O oh God. Jeke parada bakasila babarata. Lighten me up, O oh God. Lighten me up, O oh God. Joraba kabrin farada bakasha lempa rata ba sobrende kevriala dabra araba kasho tabalande breski la vrende kosha come and ensure you are praying lighten me up oh god Zeke parada basku prenfete ketila Mambre te coparande freski balada da 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 Jora baka parata kabashila da brande ketaya Mente baraski la fronde ke pariete ke Elam barate ko sobrende ke vrialish Barande kosho babaratabaya. Light in my candle. Light my light, O oh God. In your light tonight, let me see light. In your light tonight, let me see light. Let me receive insight and direction. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift your hands. 
Just lift your hand. Lift your hand. If possible, just be still. Lift your hand. Spirit of God, we gathered unto you. First Corinthians fourteen and verse forty. First Corinthians fourteen. First Corinthians. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Lentam brosali frante ana no se la dabaya. Ne la mani se la barataya. Ne la maina no se. Vela mana ne atabara chana, vela bara de mira, vela na 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 na. Vela baro si da la ya. is calling your name Emmanuel when you come to reign Emmanuel Emmanuel all the world will see a holy face Emmanuel when Come to rain. I'll put you in front, in front of my destiny. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You are not Jesus. You are all the matters. You are all the matters. Away, away. You are all the matters. Away. Father, 
tonight is gathered unto you. Thank you for your manifest presence. And in the name of Jesus, we ask that you visit us with your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please can you be seated if you can. Thank you. 
respect you Jesus you are our pastor you are our bishop the bishop of our souls the overseer we've come to tell you how much we love you how much we revile you 
Thank you, precious Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Free scripture as we begin the teaching tonight. Every teaching that will be coming this week will be instructive as the year is beginning and I will need you to pay attention to details and ensure you apply this because you see whenever the year is starting we start with a lot of seriousness with a lot of plans and um, eventually we get cold but I want you to take seriously the things you'll be hearing within these weeks and then apply them. Trust God for grace to apply them. Hallelujah. Genesis 1 and verse 1. Mystery of the first. Genesis 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God, the Bible said created, but that's not even our interest tonight. The first four words is our interest. Everybody look up and read. One to read. In the beginning, uh huh. God, once again. In the beginning, uh huh. One more time. In the beginning, God. You see, if we close this service at this point and I ask you to go home, this should be a revelation in your heart. That to every beginning, to every beginning, God must be captured in the equation. That you don't begin life, you don't begin career, you don't begin a year, you don't begin a season of your life outside God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning of career, God. In the beginning of academics, God. In the beginning of business life, God. In the beginning of your, 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 your marriage life, God. In the beginning of relationship, God. That every beginning in this kingdom or in the life of a believer that does not capture God in the equation, eventually will frustrate that believer. Whoever that believer is, and whatever that venture is, that if you venture into it and God is not part of the equation, somewhere along that line, you are going to be frustrated and you're going to quit. And it's quite unfortunate how that a lot of believers can start up so many things and God is not part of it. So when they get to a point and it looks like this is no longer working, then we look for God and we ask questions, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, where are thou? Show yourself now. Answer your name. And we do all kinds of things to push God or to squeeze God into an equation that he was not part of from the beginning. If you are God by yourself, you are not going to be part of a journey that did not start with you. Is that true? You are not going to be part of it, even in your intelligence right now. When people, or maybe let's say friends, start up things and then they didn't involve you at the beginning. Let's assume a relationship. They start a relationship and you are not aware. Then somewhere along the line, they are dying in the relationship and they want to drag you in. You will, you will pretend as though you are not even aware they were in a relationship. Were you ever in a relationship? What you are trying to let them know is that I was not part of this at the beginning. Why are you trying to factor me in it now? This is true about God. That whatever it is you want to do as a believer, the year is just beginning now. If God is not captured at the beginning of the year, don't get to February, don't get to June, don't get to October. And maybe because of the frustration, you try now to squeeze God into the equation. No, it's not going to work that way. That he has to be part of every beginning. In the beginning, God. God is always interested in the beginning of wherever it is that want to truly work with him. Second scripture, as we progress with the teaching. Acts of the Apostles 17, 19. I can hear your keyboard. Maybe increase your strings a little. Acts of the Apostles 17, did I say 19? 28. 28. Now everybody look up, read, want to read now. For in him we what? Live. That if you are ever going to be alive, look at this now. You have to live in him. Your reality has to be in him. Number two, in him we what? In him we move 
Number three, in him we have our being. This summarizes the life of every individual. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. That if you want to truly live a life of impact, you want to have sustainable results in this kingdom, you have to ensure that God is part of the ecosystem of your life. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. I don't start living and I don't start the journey, start moving. Then somewhere around, let's assume you are going to Lagos. I don't even know the road. You follow local jar, right? I think this local jar road leads to everywhere in this nation. Is that true? Everybody will tell you local jar will stop here to eat. That local jar, may God bless them. Now, let's assume you are going to Lagos and you have to pass through local jar. You didn't ask God at the beginning. He was not factored into the journey. Somewhere you get to local jar bridge and the bridge is falling down. Oh God, where are you? This bridge cannot just fall. We started this journey together. No, you started the movement alone. And you don't squeeze him in now. A lot of people can start a lot of things and assume God to be part of it. And then later realize that he was not even part of it. Listen, it is wisdom to ensure that God is part of every beginning. No matter how little you think that thing is. It's just a little business. God should be part of it. I'm just taking a stroll to the youth on there. God should be part of it. I just want to test run a business. God should be part of it. There is nothing like test running. God should be part of the test run. That as a believer, you are not supposed to have a life outside God. Say amen to that. That you don't have a life outside God. You know, many times you hear believers say things like, uh, let's now, let's drop Christianity aside and talk reality. No, you don't have a life outside Christianity. That's what I'm trying to say. And let's forget about God now. Forget about God. Let's forget about God. Let's forget about spirituality. And let's talk reality. Let me tell you something. Your reality is captured in the word of God. Everything that is not captured in the word of God to you is not a reality. No matter how tangible that thing can be, if it is not factored in God, it's not reality. In Him we move. In Him we live. And in Him, we have our being. God is always interested in becoming the first in your life. And he's interested in having the first of your life. This is very strategic. He's interested in becoming the first in your life. And he's interested in having the first of your life. Third scripture as we make progress. Exodus 13 and verse 12. That thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the metrics. That is all that comes out of the womb first. Whatever first is produced or whatever you have, he said you shall set it apart. He said, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. God is interested in the first of your life. Maybe one more scripture. Genesis 4. And verse 4. God is interested in becoming the first in your life and is also interested in the first that comes from you. And Abel, he also brought up the firstling of his flock. Are you seeing it now? He brought the first to the Lord. God is my priority. He brought the first to the Lord. And then of his flock and the fat thereof and the lord had respect are you seeing this that god honors the first everything that has to do with the first you will now realize why the bible calls him the alpha and what so if he's not the alpha he's not even ready to be the alpha, i mean the omega the beginning then the end the bible calls him the author of our faith the, the author and the finisher of our faith these names are strategically used for the lord for a reason that God will have to be at the front. If you can give him the front, then the backward is covered. If you can allow him to be at the front of your life, nobody can hurt you from the back. Because as soon as you make him the alpha, automatically, the office is a two-fold office. He cannot be the alpha and not be the omega. Are you understand what I'm teaching this evening? That if you ever, for whatever reason, make him the alpha, then be rest assured that he has become the omega 
If you ever make him the beginning of your life, be rest assured that he's also the end of your life. So if I say, Lord, I put you at the front of my life, you are the beginning. I honor you as the first, as the priority in my life. What I'm telling the Lord is, you are at the beginning and automatically, for being at the front, you are also at the back. You will be scared of life. Listen to me and listen carefully. This is a very serious teaching. You will be scared of life if God is not at the front because you will be wondering what will befall me. Will I ever stay long, I mean, on earth? Will this result be sustainable? Will I have this for a long time? A lot of people have lived life in fear. Fear. If you want to be at rest, put God at front. Make him a priority. Prioritize God. Prioritize him. You are my priority. You're my treasure. My priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, more means star. You're truly young. everything. Prioritizing God in your academics. So you get into school and others are like academics first. And you're like, no, I have a revelation. God first. God first. Academics can be second, but God first. You came to school to study. That's your primary assignment. No, sir. Before I got this admission, somebody was first in my life. He was first in my life. And that God can fight anything that attempts to take his place in the life of a believer. He can fight it. This is how much he's interested in becoming the first. This is how much he's interested in having the first place. I've shared with you before how that Abraham loved the Lord from a sincere heart until Isaac showed up. Isaac showed up and God looked all of a sudden. Isaac had taken the place of God in his heart. And then the Bible said one of those days God spoke to Abraham wake up go to a mountain i will show you go and kill this guy because this guy has taken the place your me my place in your heart the bible says he left early in the morning to mount moriah when they arrived here he tied the young boy together and laid him on the altar lifted his hand about to kill that young boy and god said no you don't have to kill him because you see the new testament tells us in romans that in the heart of abraham isaac was dead already is that it so if he was occupying a throne that god had always occupied it means already he has left that throne he was dead already and immediately god spoke from heaven he said do not kill the boy the plan was not to kill him the plan was to regain my position the plan was i get you waited for 25 years and i've been meticulous about the child isaac so the plan was not to kill isaac the thing is that as soon as isaac showed up i realized that the passion you had for me has shifted I realized I was no longer the priority in your heart. So take him. Offer him the first. Prioritizing God. Making him become the alpha. Making him become the omega. Even as the year is starting. Don't squeeze him in in March. Let him be at the beginning right now. A lot of people verbally have made God the alpha we sing it lord i put you at the front of my life lord i put you at the front of my destiny we can sing it we verbalize it we do all kinds of things around it we even sing song you are alpha you are omega and there is nothing wrong with that but that's just the first step you verbally make him a priority that's the first step that's not all that there is number two there have to be practical steps that validate that he's truly the alpha practical steps and these are the things i want to share by the leading of the spirit you are alpha and omega we worship you our god you are worthy to be praised you are alpha and omega 
scriptural actions that prove that he's truly the alpha so that it's not just a religious song that has become popular then everybody wants to follow the trend no let it become you see most of the people that wrote these songs wrote them from an experience with god they didn't just sit down to songs like this you will know they were not just written they were received they were received hallelujah Three practical ways to validate that God is first in your life. After going through these three, you will know by yourself whether truly God is a priority. Whether he's the alpha or not. And if it's not, it's not too late. The year is just the beginning. Number one, commitment to personal and corporate fellowship. Commitment to personal and corporate fellowship that you have to be committed to personal fellowship corporate fellowship talks about a gathering like this so you come to service and every time worship is happening you don't sit and you are doing as though you are monitoring everybody that is singing as though you are monitoring spirit no people don't dance and you stand as though you are monitoring the activities in church no people don't pray and you close your mouth as though you don't know how to talk no that every time we gather together you have to participate you have to in be involved in the meeting that every session when we say praise the lord you say what when we say give glory to god you say what shout glory right you see that's why there is responses in church that when we gather together your mouth is not supposed to be quiet I'm part of this fellowship, corporate fellowship. You are supposed to be part of it. It's one of the ways to know that you prioritize God. In fact, coming to church in the first place is the first sign that God, I prioritize you in my life. And then when you arrive to church, you are not supposed to sit and watch the things happening. Then maybe there are segments of service that interest you. When they start dancing, you say, I don't know how to dance, you sit down. I saw some people dancing serious dance today. Very amazing. You don't know how to dance, you will have to learn it. Times of worship. You see, let me tell you something about praise and worship. That's the only moment you have to give to God. Huh? And you are giving to God what he cannot give to himself. Do you value people giving you things that you can't give yourself? Yes, sir. If there are things you can't do for yourself and someone offers to do it to you, you are going to value it. So every time we gather together, there are anointings, there are graces that are released in that corporate atmosphere. David said, I was glad when they said to me, Psalm 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said to me, let us go. Corporate fellowship. So that you don't sit at home and you're like, I don't feel like going to church today. No, no. Corporate fellowship. This is very, very important then personal time with god that you don't allow a day pass you don't allow the week pass and you don't spare time alone with god you are sitting down alone with him oh god i love you i revere you you are all i have i miss my busy schedules i have created a space for you today i have created a space for you now no matter how little that you are supposed to capture that in your daily activities it should be captured. It's one of the ways to prove to God, not to men, to God, that he's a priority in your life. 
24 hours should not finish and God did not have 30 minutes. No. If your 24 hour finishes and God has no 30 minutes, then there is a problem. You don't now come and say, Lord, you are my priority. I value you above all. No, sir. It won't be true. If you value him above all, you can't give 24 hours to all except him. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, Lord, I love you so much more than everybody on earth. Then you go to spend four hours with a friend. Listen carefully. Because I'm about to describe some of your lives now. Then after spending four hours with a friend, you go to your business office and you spend eight hours. You are already consuming the time. You sleep like seven hours. At the end of it, you spend that 24 hours. And then you come back to the Lord in one minute. I love you more than everything. I'm sure God will be saying, you love me. I'm watching. Because the proof of love is time. If you cannot spend time with someone, don't claim you love them. You will be lying. The proof of love is time. God will have to have a space in your 24 hours. God will have to have a space in your 7 days a week. God will have to have a space in your 31 days. And God will have to have a space in your 1 year. There are people, the only space they've created for God in, in the entire year is December that if crossover night, that's the only day they've created for the Lord. So when it's, they will have to look for a church to enter anywhere, whether it's a Bible-believing church or not, provided the people gather around 10 p.m. That the first of December, crossing into January 1st, they will enter that church and I'll dance everybody that has been coming to church. I'll dance everybody. Of course, the one that did not dance from January has been piling up, piling up, piling up. They will come December 31st and drop everything. Then they leave again. And the only space they have created for God is December 31st. They come again. You don't tell God you are my priority when that's the kind of life you are living. No. You want to produce results this year. You want to walk in real favor and acceptance this year. Brothers and sisters, stay with God. Because I showed us last week that this favor thing is in twofold. Favor with God and favor with with men if you don't have favor with god men cannot give it to you no 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 it is first favor with god and with men so if you are able to stay with god and secure his attention men will pay attention to you if you are able to stay with him and listen to him men will listen to you it's very important so time of corporate and personal fellowship this was true about the life of Jesus. Let's just see the book of Mark 1.9. Mark 1, verse 9 to 12, and then we jump to 35. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Uh-huh. And straight away coming out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the Spirit of the Lord, or the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. Uh-huh. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. He has entered a corporate service. Now, verse 12. Corporate service. And immediately the Spirit of God drove him to the wilderness. He entered a corporate service. He was not the only one in that service. He was a corporate gathering. And the Bible says he encountered grace. And then see verse 35. Same chapter, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into where? A solitary place, an isolated place. And he was there alone, and there he prayed. Personal time. This is Jesus, the one we serve. After entering a congregate, I mean a general worship service, the Bible says he also have to isolate himself to spend time alone. Personal and corporate fellowship. One thing have I desired, and one thing do I seek, that I might dwell in the presence of the Lord. It will become one of your strategies this year. If you want to walk in the reality of everything God has told you as an individual, and then as a family of faith, you will have to do these things I'm sharing. Have a time with the Lord, personally. I go to work as early as 5 a.m. before you step out of your house even if it's 15 minutes you know that you leave home by five how about waking up earlier and spending at least 15 minutes with the lord before stepping out 
then somewhere around evening when you return back, spend another 15 minutes. It might look little, but how about starting there? That God should be factored in. He should have a time. It shouldn't be when we come to church on Sunday. That's when you arrive. And you come on, your Bible is dusty. You carry it and clean it and say, oh, it's Sunday already. Let's go to church. No, sir. No. Create a space for God. In the beginning. Complete the scripture. In the beginning. God. So learn to participate in the fellowship when we gather together. Learn to participate. That anything this year that will take your attention away from God, no way, no way, no way. Anything that will keep you very busy and you don't have one minute for God, no way, no way. And our world is so designed in a way that is doing everything possible to chalk Jesus out. So it will give you an engagement that keeps you completely busy. Even as men of God, you are so busy, you don't even spend time with God. That already is a problem. So number one, commitment to personal and corporate fellowship. Number two, inquiring from the Lord before taking decisions. inquiring from the lord before taking decision whether major decisions or minor decisions inquiring from the lord inquiring from the lord oh lord should i go ahead lord what are you saying and until the voice comes clear i'm not moving genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning what god in the beginning god I'm about to venture into buying and selling. Lord, what are you saying? You have to hear what God is saying. You have to hear. Because you see, when there is problem along that line of business, the only person you will be able to run to again is God, right? And if you come to God, he's going to ask you whether you ask him before starting. You will even have the boldness to come before him. Because you didn't inquire of him. No matter how little it is this year, make up your mind. Oh God, I'm not taking decisions without hearing what you are saying. No. Lord, I'm 27. I'm about to start a relationship. What are you saying? Because a woman look at you and say, you are 27. You are not in a relationship. Uh -uh. By now. In fact, when I was your age, I was married. Our dealings differ. Are you aware? For some of you, God might keep you till you are 30. No relationship. As a young man, Lord, why are you keeping me? You're building a strategy. Just hold your peace. When I'm done with you, the world will know that I truly invested in you. Our dealings are not the same. So you don't move because all your friends have moved. No, sir. I'm older than all my friends and they have gone ahead. Lord, I'm moving. You know? Say something. Oh, I take a step. Not this year. You have lived like that all your life. You've not produced so much. How about making up your mind this year? Oh God, I won't move one inch until I hear you. I won't move one inch. A lot of us have mastered the way God speaks to us. Some of you receive your instruction through dreams. For many of you, it's true feelings. You will know it. That the level of peace you have is a go ahead. For many of you, you just perceive. Others, you feel it. For others, it's the word of God. And that's even the most sure one now. You'll be reading in the morning and studying the word of God and here comes an instruction relating to what you've been praying about. This year you will have to, in case you have not mastered how God speaks to you, you might have to insist, oh God, I want to master your voice to me as a person. I'm tired of living, trying and erring, I mean, a life of trial and error. I will try, it doesn't work, then I come back, Lord, what are you saying? No, sir, you may have to master it this year. I won't take a step until I hear what you are saying. Look at the life of David. 1 Samuel 30 and verse 1. You don't jump into anything because you feel like, no, you make proper inquiries. From verse 1, the last verses of verse 8 is even our interest, but let's just start from here. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag, on the third day that the Amalekite had invaded the south and Ziglag, and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire. Next verse. And had taken the women captive that were daring. They slew not any. 
either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Next verse, let's read on. So David and his men came to the city. This is where they dwell now. And behold, he was born with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to cry. Have you cried like that before? The cure to this kind of life is the next step David took. Next verse, please. And David, two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam and Je the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Next verse. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him. A king should not be discouraged like this, so let's kill him. He's not qualified to become a king because the souls of the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughter, but David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Let me even pause here and talk to you for a while. Please keep the scripture. This is not the year to look for people to encourage you. Say amen. You see, I, I, let me make it categorical now. If you are still the type that want people to encourage you, you are not even ready for anything yet. Great people have found a way of encouraging themselves in tough times. Ah? Huh? So, I am discouraged. I don't feel like going to church today. Really? I am discouraged. I don't feel like praying today. I am discouraged. I don't. And you have been in church for 10 years. You better wake up. This journey is not for the weak. No, it's not for the weak. Ask anybody that is producing any form of result in any area of life. This is not for weaklings. If you really want to stand out this year, you have to create a system of keeping yourself encouraged. Discouragement will come knocking at your door. But refuse to be discouraged. Refuse to take it in. And you see, every time you notice that so much is coming on you, discouragement from every angle, things are just happening coincidentally and simultaneously, is a proof that you are about to break into a dimension. So Satan has a strategy of ensuring that you are discouraged, you are frustrated, you don't pray, you lose your happiness, and then immediately whatever he has in store for you is missing. Because if you are not in good alignment and posture, you can't receive it. Make up your mind this day. I won't need anybody to encourage me when it has to do with my life and destiny, when it has to do with the things of the Lord, when it has to do with my giftings, when it has to do with my business, when it has to do with the company I started, I won't need anybody to encourage me. Every time it looks like I'm getting discouraged, I will retreat. Spend a full day with the Lord and come out encouraged again. Create a system of encouraging yourself in the Lord. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? I want somebody to just massage me and tell me you are doing well. No, sir. In fact, the way God trains great people is that nobody will appreciate you when you are in training. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you want everybody to be massaging you and clapping for you, you are in error. You are not even the great one now. Everybody come and tell you, well, don't know. You are trying, you know. What? That is, you see, all of those kind of accolades, if you are not mature, they are the, they are the beginning of your death. Well done, they clap for little thing. They celebrate you and hype you and take you on a ladder. If you live like that, you are about to die. So what God does is that he hides your impact. He hides your progress from people and allows you to keep moving. As you are moving, you are saying, Lord, this journey is not easy. And he just taps you. He's the only one tapping you in the secret place. Can you continue this journey? There is something I'm building in you. When I'm done, the nation will be in awe. That's how God trains great people, brothers and sisters. Everybody should clap and celebrate you. Not that so. Not, not that way. Not so. David encouraged himself in the Lord. I was talking to the workers. I think it was on Monday. I said, can you imagine me saying I'm too discouraged today? Oh, I'm tired. I can't come to church to preach. Even when I lost a day one, I still preach that day. Day one, I preach that day. What be to me? If I preach not the gospel. No, no. This thing has entered me and that's what I'm trying to share with you. My passion. My contemplations. That nothing should be strong enough. Be it lack of cash. Be it whatever it is. Accusation from whatever angle. Make up your mind this year to be rugged and dogged. That your, your journey with God is for whatever. You are not looking at the things happening around you. Your eyes is fixed on the cross. The Bible said Jesus himself. Whom for the joy that was set ahead of him endured everything. And then his gaze was on the cross. 
encourage himself in the Lord. Next verse. And David said to Abiata, that's the priest among them, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee bring me hither the effort. And Abiata brought it at the effort to David. It's the priestly garment. And David inquired, it was a symbol of the ark now, a symbol of something that is taken from the, I mean, the presence of God. And David inquired, that's the word now, inquired, inquired. Lord, I know I'm a warrior. I know I'm a fighter. I don't fight and lose. We know from Bible history that David fought 66 battles and never lost one. Now you are seeing the secret. He didn't just go into fight because he was killed. It's like saying, I want to go into business because I have 200,000. You are joking. You are joking. Ask those that started with one millionaire and didn't come out with anything. Are you getting blessed today? It looks like a very serious service, right? It is. Because we have to start this year with the red eyes. Yeah. I am skilled in fighting. But before I go to face these people, oh Lord, what are you saying? So if God had told David, don't pursue, they are strong and I can't deliver you, David would have stayed back. But of course, the God we serve is not a weakling. He inquired, shall I pursue after this troop? Oh God, <laughs> shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him. If you go to inquire of the Lord and you don't get answer, don't move yet. Because the silence of God is also telling you something, right? If God is quiet about the relationship, don't move yet. If God is quiet about the business, don't move yet. Just remain until the word comes. You see, our generation can pressure us into things. Never allow yourself to be pressured. I remain until the word comes. And look at what the Lord said. Pursue. For thou shalt surely, oh my God, overtake them and without fail, recover how many? All, not few. You see, when you run with words like this, you run in confidence. Confident. Confident. Imagine staying with the Lord and then he gives you a scripture. Maybe you are even about to venture into something and then he gives you a scripture like this. You will so know that this is God talking to me. Pursue. Without fail, you will recover all. And of course, the rest is history. David went after them. Recovered everything and destroyed them utterly. Destroyed them all and recovered everything. One more scripture. John 1.1 1, 1. Apostle, how about me not being able to hear the audible voice of God? If you cannot hear the voice of God, read the voice of God. Huh? If you cannot hear the voice of God, do what? Read the voice of God. You see this Bible? It is the voice of God to you. So if you cannot hear, there is not two ways complaining. And no, read the voice of God. A lot of people want to hear the voice when they have not read the voice. Read the voice. It makes it easier to hear the voice. In the beginning was the word. The other one, in the beginning, God, right? And here, in the beginning was the word. Eventually here. And the word was with, and the word was. So if you also read it and say, in the beginning, God, you are still correct. You are still correct. Because eventually we realize that the word of God here is, is God. You see, the book of John 1 looks like Genesis 1. They have similarities. Is that true? Yeah. In the beginning was the word. So in the beginning of my career, I got a word from God. That's the revelation behind receiving a team for the year. Favor and acceptance. That's the revelation behind having a personal word from God. In the beginning of my relationship, God told me he has given me rest. In the beginning of that business, God told me I'm coming out with flying colors. In the beginning of the year, the Lord told me your finances are settled. So as you journey with the Lord and you get to somewhere around June, July, and it looks like what God said is not happening, you can carry that word and go back to the Lord. The Bible says bring your strong argument. Is that it? You don't go to argue with the Lord with English. You go to argue with the Lord with his word. What he has told you. This year, resolve to be a word addict. I won't move without the word. I won't take a step 
without a word. I'm tired of trying to move again and again and bouncing back. This year, my finances, what are you saying, oh Lord? This year, my career, what are you saying? I will have to have a word for the ministry. I will have to have a word. Ancient words never true. This word I've been here before they get back to you. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open heart. All that the ancient word impart. Ancient word, ancient word, ever true. I will stay with your word to hear what you are saying. This word is older than your circumstances. It's older than your great-grandfather. It has produced result for people. Why not stick to it? If you can stick to this Bible, to this word, and you go, you will certainly return with testimonies. If you can stick to it, you will return with testimonies. My counsel, how about downloading an audio Bible this year? How about that? When you are busy at work, audio Bible is playing in your ear. Instead of playing some songs that are not even blessing, I will be surprised if you are here and you still play secular songs. I'm surprised and I will be surprised, very surprised. How about having audio Bible in your phone? It is playing through the night. It is playing while you go to work in the morning. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the word. I have it, that's how it read. And the word was with God. When it's done with chapter 1, it says John chapter 2. It continues from chapter 2. And you are just feasting. It's called word feast. You are feasting on the word. All your, your, your system is charged up with the word. When a circumstance comes, you don't have to look for what to say. The word of God is already dwelling in you. He said, let the word of God dwell richly in you. So that when situation comes, you don't like what to say. It just pops up. Pops up. A lady shared her testimony in Kefi. And then we're discussing that with first lady while coming from service. The lady came to me, the last workers meeting in Kefi and told me first list is out, second list is out third list is out, admission I have not gotten and I have waited for 7 years Apostle, and I have been attending lecture from day 1 I joined them to wear matriculation uniform but I am not admitted I am about to return back home December with shame exam is starting third they are, they are already closed, exam is starting third and she came to me and asked her what's your name she said love, I said love fell it not if you live with the word of God in your inside huh? situation will come the word will just pop up i told her love fell it not you can't be loved and you don't have admission i declare you a student now she testified on 27th of december brother don't they go for break who gave admission on 27th she 27 is supposed to be break now she's a student love fell it you have to be loaded with the word when situation comes like that the first thing you say matters Something is about to happen. Like, hey, my father. Who, who is your father? We have to know. If your father is a harbor, is that? <laughs> the word. Let the word of God richly dwell in you. Richly. Richly. Go around, Lord, dead with it. Stay with it. You see, if you can stay to inquire of the Lord, it's a proof he's a priority. It's a proof you put him. It's like trying to do something and you go to your biological father and you say, my daddy, I'm about to get married. He say, oh, wow, that's fine. Let's talk about this. That's what it means. You don't plan your wedding and your father is not aware. Some of you have been married. You don't plan and then the death is fixed already. Everything is ready. Then you go and tell your father, daddy, uh -huh, how old am I now? I think you're around 29. Am I man enough to marry? Say yes, just for information, the date has been fixed. I'm sure you will look at you and say, You are not a useless child. I know what I get there to. And whatever has bewitched you, I bring you deliverance now. You see it? You don't do that to your father. In fact, when the relationship is getting very serious, you involve him. Is that it? You are not yet talking about marriage, you involve him. A proof that he has a space in your life. 
And if I be your father, God speaking now, where is my honor? His honor should be that you inquire of him. Lord, I need to take a decision. What are you saying? Multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. Multitude, confused. What do I do? Where do I go from here? And you will have to stay with God. Tarry dear. It might take long. But please, it better stay long and you are sure of the journey. Than you move and you move faster but you are applying the wrong road. This year, make up your mind. Make up your mind. I will stay with the Lord to hear what he's saying. No matter how little, I will take a step. Maybe somebody invites you to their office or to their workplace or to their house and you're about to go, Holy Spirit, I'm moving, can I? What are you saying? There are times you will literally hear the Lord telling you no. You know, a lot of times we have disobeyed the voice of God like that. It was mercy that preserved us. You, you, you see, you went and came back and you felt this because uh, it was not even God ahead. No, it was God who had. What kept you was mercy. For they are new every morning. It's not like he was endorsing it. It was his mercy that kept you. In the beginning was the word. When you have that word, it shines through darkness. Lord, what are you saying this year? You've told us as a ministry is a year of favor and acceptance. I've adopted that word. But Lord, how about a personal word for my finances? How about a personal word for my family? How about a personal word for the ministry? I need to hear you talk to me. I need to hear you talk to me. Finally, number three. A proof that God is a priority in your life. Number one, I told us commitment to both corporate and personal fellowship. Where you are alone with God, giving him attention and time is a proof that he's first. You are making him the first. Number two, that you will always inquire of him before you take a step. You don't start and choke Jesus somewhere in the equation. No. Number three, your first fruit. Honoring the Lord with your first fruit is also a proof that God is a priority, even over your finances, over your life generally. Genesis 4, verse 4, where we read the Bible says, Abel brought off his first fruit, firstlings, first fruit to the Lord. And the Lord had respect first to a man and then next to his offering. He brought an offering, but God had respect to him. Then, secondly, to the offering he brought. So that every time you bring your first fruit, God respects you first. It's like respect is reciprocal, right? You are honoring the Lord and bringing first fruit and saying, Lord, this is the first income that came into my account in 2021. I mean 2022. This is the first money I received in 2022. I've brought it back to you as my first fruit. The Bible says, for doing that to me, I respect you too. That's what God is saying. God respected Abel too. And then by extension to his offering. So there are people upon the earth God respect. Are you seeing this? It's in your Bible. There are people God honors. And this is a condition. You bring your first fruit, I respect you for putting me first. Your case is different. Separate yourself. Have respect to Abel and then second to his offering. We read already the book of Exodus that talks about separating the first and bringing to the Lord. Ezekiel 48 and verse 14. Just a few scriptures and then we wrap up tonight. Are you learning something? Let me hear you. Are you learning something? All right. And they shall not sell of it. He's talking about your first fruit. You don't give it out. You don't sell it. You don't exchange it. You don't alienate it. He said the first fruit of the land, it is holy unto the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. So what is your first fruit? It means the first of your income at every strategic season of your life. Either the beginning of the year or the beginning of a job or the beginning of a career or the beginning of a business. Whatever income that comes in first, it belongs to the Lord. That's what the Bible is saying. And that's what the Bible calls first fruit. 
Some people have it as a culture. Every January, their first salary, first fruit. Some people have it as the first money that enters into the account, first fruit. A lot of people don't even know of this at all. But it's one of the ways to show that you really prioritize God. This is not the first. I started somewhere. But it's part of the equation and I will have to teach it. So the year is beginning. You just enter the year, your finances scattered, or you just gather things here and there. You're like, wow, wow, wow. No, sir. God has to be involved in that equation. And you get him involved by submitting your first fruit to him. So why do we give our first fruit? Four reasons. It is a way of acknowledging him over your finances. Every time you bring your first fruit, you are acknowledging him. Lord, this year, over my finances, I acknowledge you as the first, the priority. Over all the money in my account, over all the money I'm investing, I acknowledge that you are Lord over that money. I'm not the owner of the money. I'm a steward and I acknowledge. Wealth in this kingdom of total is a, is a trust. So I acknowledge that this money I have, you gave it to me. I acknowledge that this money I'm about to invest is your money. You see, this is why you will make investment and not lose. Because it is God's money. You have involved God in it. You have to understand it's very powerful. So it's a way of acknowledging God over your resources. Number two reason is a way of preserving what is left or what comes in hereafter. Romans 11 16 is a way of preserving when you give the first income you are preserving now everything that will come throughout the year preserving the, the entire finances of the year for it is the first fruit for if the rather if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches so if the first fruit be preserved everything that comes in is preserved also Lord, this year, I don't want to make investment that bounce back on me. Honor him with your first fruit. Lord, this year, I want my resources to be managed by you. Bring your first fruit. It's very important. Maybe the first contract of making a cake. Lord, every profit I get from there, my first fruit. A way of showing that you are my priority. You're my treasure. My priority Who can compare To you Great is the measure Of your loyalty Oh more Mean star Your truth of honor to the Lord. Every time you bring your first fruit is a proof of honor to the Lord. Proverbs 3 and verse 9. Hey, hey. Honor the Lord with thy substance. Everybody read the remaining line. Want to read. And with the first fruit of all thine increase for doing that look at the next verse look at what happened next verse everybody want to read so shall thy bands be filled with what plenty uh-huh and thy presses shall burst out with new wine freshness when you honor the lord with your first fruit he said look at what happened you live in plenty you live in plenty. You put God under pressure to ensure that his word is true. He will have to make you live in plenty. We've been doing this as a ministry at the beginning of every year. Every year. We give our first fruit as a ministry. And I've been amazed how the finances of the ministry keep going from one level to another every year. No diminution. Every year. Daring projects. Why? We've learned to honor the Lord every year. At the beginning of every year. You can, you can do that for your personal life. That's why I declared last week that January all true will be our month of first fruit. Prioritizing God first. Staying with him in the place of fellowship. Then making inquiries. Lord, what next? How do I go about this? Then next, your first fruit. is a way of honoring the Lord. Lord, I truly honor you. 
I truly celebrate you for all you've been doing for me, for all you intend to do this year. And I bring this as a proof of honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, it is a way of making the blessing to rest or to be sustainable. Ezekiel 40, 44, rather than 30. And the first of all the first fruit of the things, of all things rather. So not just few things, now all things. Whether business, whether ministry, whether career, whatever it is, all things. The first of the first fruit of all things. And every oblation of all, of every sort of your oblation shall be the priest. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dog, that he might cause the blessing to what? To rest in the house. That he might cause the blessing to be established. Cause the blessing to be sustainable. That the blessing rests. I'm starting the year. I don't know what you expect. When you honor the Lord with your first fruit, the blessing rests. You can know what you expect. You can know what to expect. You can be rest assured that this is going to work. It's going to turn out in my favor. Your first fruit. Scripturally, every believer is supposed to practice this. Even God practice that. Hebrews 1 and verse 6. Kabbalah Tabaya. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten, that was his first fruit, the first begotten, the first of his all, into the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. When God gave one, his only begotten, he was so confident. Have you no wonder the level of confidence God had? He gave his only son, not knowing whether anybody will ever believe. Just go and die. We are not sure they will believe, but in case, just go and die. What, what was that level of confidence? It is a law with first fruit that when you honor it, God is under obligation to ensure that the blessing rests. Under obligation. So you start the business by January and the first profit that came was just 200 naira. And you were foolish enough to respect everything I'm teaching. You carried the 200 naira and wrote on an envelope my first fruit and dropped it like a joke. You will be surprised next year begin and the first contract you have is 20,000 naira. You are like, Lord, is this how you do this thing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the part of the trust is as a shining light. It only shines when light is in place. Are you aware? It doesn't shine because you confess it. It shines because you know the rules of engagement. And this is it now. You will be surprised. One year will come. And the first contract you ever make, the deal, the first income is 20 million naira. And you will sit and say, I can remember. My first fruit in the year 20 whatever was 200 naira. Now my first fruit is 20 million naira. That's how God lives me. May that be somebody's testimony. No, may that be somebody's testimony. Hallelujah. The first fruit. Summary. Listen. God is interested in becoming the first in your life. And beyond becoming the first, he's also interested in having the first from your life. The equation has to be balanced. It has to be balanced. If I be your God, if I be your father, where is my honor? Where is my place? That's what he's saying. So Lord, I've made up my mind not just to verbally claim that you are the alpha of my life. Verbally claim that you are, you are the beginning I put to in front and all of this. I've made up my mind. You see, you are not supposed to sing that song if you don't understand what I'm sharing now. I put you in front. Powerful song. Front of my melody. Front of my destiny. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. If you sing that song and God cannot still find you in the place of personal fellowship, you are a liar. Huh? You are lying. Because I'm sure we'll sing that song and then we'll lift our hands and cry. And you say, Lord, truly, you are my everything and God is here for you. Everybody might be saying the truth, but you, you are lying. Even me and you know you are lying. Because for three weeks now, you've not had 30 minutes with me. Why are you singing this song? The song is not for you. I put you in front. 
in front of my melody, in front of my destiny, in front of my career, in front of my ministry, that beyond my reputation, beyond what I want for myself, priority. So if you claim God is first in your life, the first proof is that you will spend time with him alone. Time. Time. Quality fellowship. And every time we gather like this, readiness. You are coming with the atmosphere from your secret place just to continue where you stopped. You flow in that reality. Second, that you won't take a major decision. A major, a minor. You won't take decision without inquiring of the Lord. Lord, what are you saying? I listened to a great man of God that said that at times he will want to take some decision. It can take him two, three weeks because God has not said anything. He will go and stay with the Lord. He can even retreat for three days. When God doesn't speak, he will come out from the retreat and plan to go for another one. Lord, I must hear what you are saying. I don't want to walk in error. It's one of the ways to prove that he's a priority in your life. And finally, your first fruits. Giving God the first of all your incomes. Either at the beginning of a job, a career, a year, whatever. It could even be a birthday. Just to acknowledge that you are all. You are all. And we're going to pray this evening. Because you see, your life must produce superior results this year. Believe me. This is why these words that are going to come within this week are very instructive very instructive very instructive you are all that matters you are all that matters i'll put you in front in front of my melody you are all that matters you are all that matters I'll make room for two. You are I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. I'll make room for two. Yeah. You are I, Jesus. You are all. Put you in front of Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Shara da 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 da
first in my life. I put you at the front of my life. I make you the priority in my life, in my business, in my career, in my ministry, in my family. I make you the priority. Lift your voice and pray. Verbally declare it. I need a firm, oh God. of your life number one verbally number two that are practical steps you're going to pray the second prayer lord i've had all the instructions i've had everything that it takes to prove you are a, a, a priority in my life and i receive grace to spend time with you i receive grace to wait on instructions from you from your word i receive grace to even bring my first fruit all of the instructions tied to this i receive grace Lift the voice and pray. I receive grace to give to them, oh God. I will not take a step without hearing you. I will not move in ministry without hearing you. I will not move in business without hearing you. I will not make investment without hearing you. I will not move in marriage, a relationship without hearing you. And I receive grace for personal time of fellowship. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship you, my God. 
Lift your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands and just be still. Lift your hands. Shalom everywhere. Lift your hands. I'm going to speak of our lives. But look what the Lord told me when we started the prayer. That there are people who is reactivating your ability to hear him. Lift your hands. It's not one person. It's not three people. It's not even ten people. Some of you used to truly hear him. He's being restored. Some of you don't even know whether God speaks at all. He's reintroducing that voice to you. Lift your hands. Father, right now. For some of you already hear his voice and you are fine. It only becomes clearer. But as many tonight... Let the hand of God touch your ears. Touch your spiritual senses. Fine tune that hearing now. 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 With clarity. With precision. With clarity. With precision. 
with clarity, with precision, you will begin to hear that voice. He said, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. That voice is becoming clear. That voice is becoming clear. That voice is becoming clear. And I decree and declare, you won't miss instructions. You won't miss instructions. Instructions that will change your life. You will hear them clearly. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As many as have lost the art of hearing, now in the name of Jesus, let there be a touch on your spiritual senses. Let there be a touch on your spiritual senses. Let your hearing be reactivated right now. May the word of God become life to you from now. May the word of God become life to you from now. You will hear him through his word with clarity and precision. You will know what way to take from now in the name of the Lord Jesus. From now on, receive grace for quality time of fellowship with the Lord. Quality time of fellowship with the Lord. As you go from here in the name of Jesus, I decree that the Lord call you into deeper experiences with him. His voice will become your treasure. His voice will become your treasure in the name of the Lord Jesus. Finally, I'm praying. Receive grace to withstand pressure. Receive grace to withstand pressure. The pressure of attempting to run without hearing a go from the Lord. Receive grace to overcome it in the name of the Lord Jesus. From now, I decree that this year opens for you in dramatic ways. God will bring you life-changing instructions. Life-changing instructions. And may he become truly, by experience, the alpha of your life. By experience, may he become the omega of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, while everybody remains standing, just one assignment. You know you are here. You are not born again. Listen. It's one of the ways to put God at the front of your life. He's not even anywhere close if you are not born again. It's one of the ways to say, Lord, I admit you into my life and may you become truly the priority in my life. You are here and you are not born again. Or you are saying tonight, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord Apostle. I want God to truly be the priority, not verbally, experientially. Wherever you are, I want you to take a step from your seat, carry your Bible and everything you brought to church and run forward quickly. Come. You are in that category, come quickly. If you are thinking about it, you are supposed to be here. Carry your Bible and your bag and come quickly. Respond to this call. You are from the overflow. You are hearing the voice of the Lord. And God is talking to you to respond. Please come quickly. I'm waiting for you. You are saying by experience, I want God to truly be a priority in my life. Come. Come quickly. God bless you. Take that step. Take that step. Come. Take that step. Don't be the last to reach. Take that step. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I perceive there are a few more people thinking about it. Stop thinking and start coming. Stop thinking about it and start coming. Come. 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 The Lord has a plan for your life, but this is usually the first step. Come. There is so much the Lord wants to do with your life, but this is usually the first step. Come. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Don't stay back if the Lord is talking to you. Don't stay back. Come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's a way of saying, Jesus... You are my priority. Come. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, can you put your hand in your chest, your heart? Put your hand in your heart. You're going to pray this prayer, and I want you to mean it from the depths of your heart. Say, dear Jesus, if you are coming, pray it while you come. Say, dear Jesus, I believe in you, and I believe you are the Son of God. Today, I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life. Forgive all my sins. And today I receive by faith the gift of eternal life. I'm born again and I'm a child of God now. 
Thank you for saving me. Amen and amen. I pray for you now. I decree in the name of Jesus, the Lord, let your name be named upon this one. Let Satan lose claims over their life. Every yoke addiction be broken. We welcome you back home to the family of God, and I decree that the seal of God is upon you. You will go and love the Lord and be established from now on. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please, you follow this usher. They are going to go with you and then attend to you outside. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please celebrate them. Celebrate them. God bless you. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Are you blessed today? You are blessed. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. All right, please be seated five minutes and then we are out of this place. Let me just intimate us with this few announcements. Amen. All right, first of all, our school of ministry forms are still available. And the lecture starts on 1st of February, um, stretching to 20th. So please, you have not applied yet or you have loved ones, you want them to be part of this. Maybe you attended last year and then you know there are people that should be part of this. Please find a way reach them is a good training for everybody that intends to either get into ministry or leadership as it were so please get to be part of it and then um, um yesterday there was a wedding here amen amen it was a good way to start the year so it's already approved that many more are coming right and then by February, there is another announcement. Do something, oh. Some of you, do something. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, that announcement will come properly. But then, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Oguche. Thank you. The Lord bless you. And um, your marriage is blessed. Amen. Every marriage so far in this place has been amazing. Amen. Yes, we've been following through. Every marriage has been amazing. You know, as a ministry, the ministry's name is what? Family is even our first. So we have priority for families. It's our desire to see marriages work, to see relationships work. That's why before you jump into anything, please inquire. Because we want it to work. So before you jump in, do what? Inquire of the Lord. And if possible, take counsel. Amen. So please, um, if you are a worker, tomorrow is our workers meeting. I didn't announce it last week. And um, I'm sure many workers did not show because they didn't just know. But please, our workers meeting tomorrow by 5 p.m. If you are joining a department, also meet us tomorrow by 5 p.m. Amen. And then finally... Um, in case you came with your first fruit while we stand to pray and close, you can just come and drop it. Uh, you are dropping it now with an understanding. Those of you that did it last week, of course, there's an understanding backing up what you did last week. Amen. It's important that when you do a thing, there's an understanding backing it up. So please, if you still do it, we are still in January. Amen and amen. All right. And then finally, our kingdom advancement prayer continue tomorrow. Um, daily cap, right? daily kingdom advancement prayer we are here tomorrow 6 a.m to 6 30 just to pray and ask god for revival in this city ask god for souls ask god for visitation like you know we started december first last year and we are stretching it all through this year so please join the tens and the hundreds of people coming around to pray every morning tomorrow by 6 a.m and the lord do you good in jesus name amen are you blessed tonight all right be on your feet with a shout of praise Amen. All right, lift your hands. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank Him. Thank Him. Those of you that travel from far for the service, I can see a lot of you. God bless you. The Lord honor you. The Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord for tonight. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him for His word. Thank Him for His, your year of favor and acceptance. I told you your responsibility this year is to keep confessing it. Thank him because it's your year for favor. It's your year for acceptance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah.
All right. I'm just reminded of the partnership card. You collected the card last week and you've not submitted. You can submit or you've not collected and you want to be a partner with the ministry. The cards are available. Um, you can at the ushering stand when going out or at the overflow, you can just come in at the ushering stand at the back. You can ask to get the partnership card and in case you filled your own, um, how do they submit it now? How do, who do should they give it to? To the ushers. All right. Also at the back, you'll find a way at the ushering stand. Um, you also submit it there. Amen. You are favored this year. <laughs> Listen, every day of this week, enjoy favor. Every day from tomorrow, in fact, from this night, every day of this week, enjoy favor. Those who have not accepted your person, your gift, from now they accept you strangers accept you visitors will do you well in the name of the lord jesus this year 2022 you are favored and you are accepted in jesus mighty name surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the lord forever and ever Amen. I love you and see you on Sunday. God bless you.